So in today's video, I'm gonna talk all about my reasons for getting a 24 to 200 millimeter lens. Everybody. fantastic to see you all again I'm out taking photos just on my local walk but it's nice we've got some fog and I'm really excited and this video is all gonna be all about my new lens I've got a 24 to 200 millimeter lens and you're probably thinking why have you got that you've got enough lenses um, you've got a 24 to 70 and a 70 to 200 but I wanted to um, explain why I bought this and how I think it'll probably help me in some of my photography and maybe um, it'll be interesting for you guys as well so see what I can find and um, get to see pebbles as well okay so the first reason that I got the 24 to 200 millimeter lens was just size and weight really I mean this this lens is 600 grams compare it to the equivalent of my 24 to 70 and 70 to 200 if I go for the f2.8 then it's like 2.4 grams I think the other is about 1.6 grams so it is so much lighter and smaller than both those lenses com combined whether you go for the f2.8 or the f4 and it sometimes that quality over opportunity is so important you know I, I hike a lot and I don't want to have to carry so much equipment especially if I go camping um, you know just to be able to take this camera I could probably do all my video and my stills with this camera and that just makes such a huge difference so that size and that weight of this lens is so good and we'll talk about quality later because quality is important obviously but it's that quality opportunity balance that um, you need to take right pebs we're going this way come on The other thing I wanted to talk about with this 24 to 200 is about switching lenses and how um, it is just useful sometimes to not have to switch lenses. So, you know, you might be hiking up a mountain, it might be really bad weather, and you might not want to you keep switching lenses. It might be snowing hard, it might be raining hard. And just to have that opportunity to just pull out the camera and use any of that focal length is just so useful sometimes. So my friend um, Stuart, who's another YouTuber actually, I'll link his YouTube channel in the description, it's amazing, um, Stuart McGlennon, and he, he was out in the Lake District shooting um, in the snow recently, and I know he's got this same lens, this 24 to 200 millimeter lens, and he shot this shot here, and I just don't think he would have been able to get it if he hadn't have had that lens on because he had gone out handheld walking around in the snow and just trying to capture um, these ponies and what what you know saw his attention and he wouldn't have wanted to be changing lenses all the time and it's quite often that i'm in the same position where i'm thinking right i'm just going to stick with one lens so i'll maybe go from my 70 to 200 or my 24 to 70 and i don't want to keep changing lenses but then i just don't have the reach or i'm not wide enough so having the opportunity of the 24 to 200 millimeter outweighs you know that slight loss in quality of the lens and we'll look at quality later i'll take some shots now and we'll look at quality but i think it's important to weigh that up sometimes when you're shooting and maybe you know you're not always going to take this lens but maybe there's opportunity with this lens that you might not have had had you you know left the lens at home or just had one lens and it was raining or something Right, I'm going to shoot this scene now. So we've got um, this tree here, which looks pretty good. So I'm going to shoot this tree um, with the background of the amazing foggy um, ferns. I always like it when there's a tree like this um, that's different to the background trees. And I'm going to shoot this at probably between about 24 to 50. And then we'll go up to the top there and I'll hopefully be able to use the longer 
um, focal length of maybe 200 millimeters and we can shoot down into the valley and see what we can get. All right, let's go. It's hard to know. Red pebbles. So I'm just waiting here now. The sun's out, as you can probably see on my face, but um, I'm, I, I, this is a walk that I come all the time with pebbles that um, is at the top of a little hill near where I live. And there's a, I live on like a plain, so the plain is just down below here. And usually you can, when it gets foggy, it's really good because the sun comes up, it clears off the fog, and as the fog clears, you get patches of the land being revealed. And I was hoping to get some of those with the 200 end of the, of the um, lens. But at the moment, <laughs> the fog is persisting. The fog's winning. So we'll keep, we'll stay around. I'm sheltered a little bit now. You can probably see a little bit of that rock on the side there. And um, yeah, I'm just going to shoot. I'm going to shoot some close-ups of this tree being backlit by the, um, by the sun. I think it might look quite nice. It's just catching the um, sun, the, the water droplets on it are catching the sun really nicely. And the other thing is that people may always ask what the strap is when I, when I work, where I wear the strap. So this is a peak design strap um, and it's really good because you can just unclip it and you don't have to have it on all the time. Um, I'm not sponsored by peak design or anything, but if you want one of these then the link's in the description. Right, what do you think, Pebs? Do you think it's going to clear? Or do you think it's not going to clear? Whoa, a tripper. Right, me and Pebbles have waited around for about an hour and a half now, just sat waiting for the mist to go, and it's, it's just getting denser, I think. So it's time to go home. We've done our exercise, haven't we, Pebs? And you want your treat, don't you? So we'll go home, we'll have a look at some of the shots that I've taken. I've taken a few different shots, look at the quality of them, and I can talk a little bit more about um, you know, so th those reasons in, in the warmth with a coffee. And um, yeah, maybe we even might make a print as well. Right, come on, Pebs. Come on. So I'm back in the studio now, and I really enjoyed shooting with this 24 to 200 lens. Um, I've shot quite a few shots with it over the last few days, and I'll go through some of them and, and, and talk about some of the um, Pluses and minuses, I suppose, uh, of, of that compared to using a, a, a lens like this, which is a 24 to 70 f 2.8, which is about three times as expensive and probably twice the weight. Um, but obviously this lens is better quality than this lens. But this lens is definitely good enough quality to be able to take out and I'd be happy to print a portfolio shot from it. And you've just got to understand where it might not be quite as good as something like that. Uh, so here's some shots. So I'm just going to go through some of them quickly and some of them I'll, I'll, I'll go into a little bit more detail. So I quite like this. This was just a shot in the, in the fog, um, shot at 125 mil. So again, this was a, a zoomed in shot that I wouldn't be able to get this if it had just had this lens on. And I, I really liked it. Um, uh, it looked, yeah, it's just a really simple misty shot. This was the shot of the tree that, that I took. Um, again, I'm really, really pleased with this. If I zoom in and pixel peep, and, uh, then you can see that, you know, the quality of this is, is amazing. You know, certainly in the middle, you can't really tell much quality difference between that and, and this. Uh, the color rendition, everything about it is pretty good. You can see this rhododendron in the background looks amazing. So yeah, it looks really good. It's not an amazing shot, but the quality of the lens is, is pretty good. I took some black and whites, which I quite liked, of, the, of this hut in the mist. So this one, this one here, which I quite like as a bit of a pano. And then this one, which is a slightly different, where I focused on the wall here and just had the hut in the background. This was shot at 24 millimeters. I think 24 millimeters is probably the worst focal length of this lens. Um, especially towards the edges. But in the middle, it's super sharp. You can see, you know, this is really sharp. Yeah, and again, if, if, if I look at some, this is a 94 millimeter one of pebbles, you can see if I just zoom in, 
then it is super, super sharp. You can see all the hairs, everything about that is just amazing. So what, what's wrong with lens? What are the things you've got to look out for? Well, obviously it's not as fast, so it's um, a variable aperture f4 um, to 6.3. So you've got to be careful about that. Um, if, if you're wanting to shoot in darker conditions, then you've not got that aperture benefit that you might have with other lenses. So here's another few shots. This was um, of these sheep walking past. I, I, I quite like this, they're all looking towards me. It was just a grab shot, um, 62 millimeters, F8. Um, you know, again, if I zoom in, it's it's um, looks a bit misty, um, but it's super sharp, it's tack sharp. So yeah, I, I, I thought that looked good. Uh, and then I really like this shot here. This was a shot that I took um, of these sort of of these birch trees here, and I thought this was a really nice shot. Um, but if you look at this, I mean, it is you know this is a shot that I've edited, and it is so sharp in the middle. I've, there's just not a problem with the lens at all. I'd just be totally happy with it um, for shooting shots like this. It's it's brilliant. Really liked it. You can see all the droplets of water. And in fact, I printed that shot. Um, and um, I thought, yeah, it looked it looked really good. So this is the printed. I, I, I thought I thought this came out really well. You know, the the quality of that is just amazing. I don't think I'd be able to tell the difference between that printed at this size and my twenty four to seventy lens. The only thing you've got to watch out for really is just just the, the edges of of the lens. And I noticed at twenty four millimeters, you got some fringing, so you can see some fringing here. It was really easy, it was really easy to correct um, by just manually defringing the purple and you can see that as well. if I do that it gets rid of it um, but I also felt it was soft at the corners at 24 millimeters as well it's just something to, to watch out for really I, I don't think it's super important but it, it's it's not as sharp at the corners as something like this if I was to, if I was going down to a woodland and I, there was an amazing shot I wanted to get I didn't have to walk very far, I'd shoot this lens. This is my go-to woodland lens. Um, but yeah, I also got a, a great snow shot with it. So this was a shot at, I think it was 150 millimeters, handheld. Um, you can see, zoomed in, it's super sharp. You can see the sheep in the background and everything. Um, looks fantastic. So overall, I like this. The most important thing is it gives you opportunity. It gives you opportunity to go out and not worry about carrying a lot of gear. You can just put the strap on, sling it over your shoulder, know that you've got that, all the focal lengths covered for landscape photography really from 24 to 200 millimeters. And you can just go and um, concentrate on finding compositions and not worry too much about the gear. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed that. It's a little bit different this week. You know, it's not my usual go out and try and get some amazing shots. I wanted to talk about this because I think it's an important part of my setup and my gear and I'll definitely be using it over the next few years. Right, I'm off to work a little bit more on my book, my next book, which is Woodlands. I posted it on um, social media. When it goes on pre-order in a few weeks, I'll let everybody know, but um, I'm busy at the moment just fine-tuning all the text and, and editing all the final photos so they can go to the designers to design the layout of it. Um, and get the order right of it. So it's going to take a few weeks before I've got to the point where I've got a, a, a book I'm happy with. As soon as that's the case, I'll let you know and pre-orders will be open of Woodlands, my second book. Thanks ever so much for watching and until next Sunday, bye.